In the last video, we set up our development environment so that we could build a WAR file. I'm using Eclipse, really doesn't matter which development environment you're using. But the goal of this chapter is to deploy that WAR file to an installation of Tomcat that we're running inside a container. And of course, we're going to do that using a Docker file. Well, we saw in the previous chapter how to write a Docker file. This was the very basic Docker file that we started with before. And this one is presumably going to be quite a bit more complicated than this, but the pattern's pretty much the same. We're going to start by deciding which base image we should begin with. We'll add a line for the maintainer, which will be yourself. Then we'll add in a run command for any extra commands that we want to run in that container. And then we need to think about what the final command is going to be, the default command that we want to run for this container. So let's start with the base image. And we could do what we did in the previous chapter. We could start from something like Ubuntu, or maybe even one of the uh, much smaller distributions like Alpine. And then we could run lots of commands. We could install the JDK, we could install Tomcat, and we could transfer config files across and all the rest of it. But I hope you've got the feeling by now that that's probably not necessary because there's going to be some kind of predefined image that will probably do the work for us. We know Tomcat is used the world over for Java applications. I bet somebody's already done one. And many of you will have done this as an exercise earlier in the course. If we search for Tomcat on Docker Hub, we will find there is an official Tomcat image available. And clicking through to that, the only complex thing is there are a lot of tags associated with this image because there are so many different versions. Now, just in case you didn't do that Tomcat exercise, I just want to restate that it is possible for every repository to have a collection of tags, which is really just different images that are fulfilling the same goal, but maybe in different ways. So clearly here, it's different versions of Tomcat from six through to nine, combined with different, ver different Java versions. And also there are a few versions which are tagged dash Alpine. Alpine is a very cut down distribution of Linux. Very useful if you want to keep your containers as small as possible, and you probably do, because we want to be able to easily transport these containers. So if you don't want much in the way of Linux tooling in your container, then why not just go for the Alpine distribution? I think we'll do that in this practical. So I don't want an old version of Tomcat. And at the time of recording, the version nines are milestones. They might be official by the time you watch this, but I'm going to go for the most recent version which is released, and for me that's the 8.5. Now actually it's 8.5.16, but all of these tags here on this bullet point, all of those tags are aliases for the same thing. Well, we could use Tomcat colon Alpine. I'm going to do Tomcat colon 8 dash Alpine, just to emphasize that we are using version eight of Tomcat. It's just going to be clearer to a maintainer. If you're interested, you can follow the link here and that will take you to the Docker file that was used to build this image. Now this Docker file is significantly more complicated than the Docker files that we've been using. But actually, if you look through it, there's some fairly complex shell commands that they use to get Tomcat in a good state. Other than that, it's really nothing more than we've done on the previous chapter. Have a look at that if you're interested. So we're going to write a new Docker file then, and I hope you're following along with me. We need to think about where to put the Docker file. It's not probably the best place to put it, but for now it will do. I'm going to put the Docker file in the root of the project. So this is just going to be new file, and it's called Docker file with a capital D. You'll see in a few moments why this isn't really the best place to put that file, but I'll leave that for now. So then we are going to build an image from the standard Tomcat image, but this is going to be from the tag. So there's the colon. Well, actually thinking about it, I'm going to use this form, the very long form. 
Remember, these are all aliases to the same image, but I just think putting the full long version in is going to be better for maintenance programmers. Another reason is if they produce an 8.5.17 version, then they'll probably remove this label. We can still use it, but they'll remove this label from here but the 8.5 will be updated to point to 8.5.17. I would rather fix a version. So that's another reason for being specific about which version of the image you're using. The other easy line is we need a line for the maintainer. That will be me. Obviously put your own details in there. Now, what do we need to put in this Docker file? Well, and the answer is really just by adding little bits and pieces and then try and, and then building an image from it, and seeing if it's what they need and then modifying. So I'm going to suggest that we do nothing more than the final command statement. Well, the command we're going to need in here is going to be the command to run Tomcat. Without that, this container isn't going to do anything. And so, there's two possibilities really. Perhaps you're experienced with Tomcat and you know the command to run Tomcat, or far more likely, I would suggest, look at the reference information for this image. If you check in here, it's pretty much the first line, how to use this image. The command you're looking for is catalina.sh with the command line argument of run. Now, I know many of you will have run Tomcat locally, and you might be used to using the startup script. Now, that would be fine, sort of, but the startup script actually redirects output into a collection of log files. As I mentioned previously on the course, in a Docker container, what you really want is the output to be output to standard output, and then Docker can catch that and treat it as a log. And it's why, for that reason, we run Catalina.sh, which is a low-level script, really, that directly runs Tomcat, and all of the output will go to standard output. So that's exactly what we'll do. Catalina.sh, and the second parameter of run. Quite a bit more to do on this, but let's check that image before we go any further. So in the PowerShell, navigate to the folder that you're working in, and there's the Docker file that we're building. So this is going to be Docker image build. We need to tag this image. So I'm going to call this Fleetman dash web app. And we need the full stop. Now that's quite relevant here because remember that means that all of the files in this folder, so all of these and all of the subfolders are going to be visible to Docker when it builds this image. Now, what that means is, I hope the video will catch this. See this? Sending build context to Docker daemon. So what happened there was all of the code in my project was all kind of zipped up and was sent across to Docker. Now, I don't mean sent across over the internet. I actually just mean to the daemon process that we're running here locally on the development machine. And it's not actually that much of a problem. It just meant that I had to wait three or four seconds while that happened. So that was quite inefficient. We're going to be constantly rebuilding these images. So going forward, I think we should think about moving this Docker file to somewhere more sensible. But for now, it will be OK. Well, I see that we have an error already, an unknown instruction. I think it's just I should have put a space after the CMD. Do oh, let's try again. So yeah, a bit of a pause, but now we're up and running. This is the first time I've used the Alpine image on this machine. So this entire image needs to be downloaded. And great, that ran through okay. I think I'll try to run this. So Docker container uh, run and we'll run interactively on the terminal fleetman dash web app okay well the good thing here is that we're seeing lots of tomcat logging it took about one second to start up so it's clearly doing something now 
You can probably spot my mistake, however, if I visit localhost 8080. I'm not seeing anything. Be careful, by the way, to make sure that you're not running the Fleetman project locally. So make sure this has been stopped. You know exactly why we're not seeing anything. If we cancel that, notice because we're running interactively when we press Control C, the Tomcat container here is being destroyed. Um, the reason is, if I recall the command, we would need to publish the ports. We would need a dash P 8080 colon 8080, for example. And if we refresh that page, great, we are now seeing the default Tomcat homepage.